Like with any range of products, some watches don't speak to some people. Like when walking through a clothing department or a car showroom, we are drawn to the things we want to see and sometimes disregard what is around us. Is that a bad thing? Should we not be more open-minded? That remains to be seen. And the Bulgari Octo Finissimo tests those limits. Before writing this article, I read many other sources about this piece, mainly to see what others thought about it. As far as I could tell, this watch has received nothing but praise. In fact, the reviews on this watch are so biased that I barely finished reading the articles, and that really makes me question a lot of things. Just to be clear, we can all admire that this watch has achieved a lot on the technological side. They've emphasized again and again about their movements being the thinnest, But this movement, especially found in the new automatic chronograph, is the thinnest chronograph caliber ever made, and it's very impressive, no doubt. Bulgari has created some of the most refined calibers to date, and nothing I say should take that away from them. But this achievement seems to be something that pushes the attention away from the watch itself. So instead of discussing the movement, I will discuss the other thing, the design of the Octo Finissimo. At first glance, breaking up the elements We are greeted with a square case and a square bracelet with a circular dial. It is a unique look. Bulgari has managed to create a watch that again falls into that Genta-inspired class of pieces, and often this watch is compared against them, so I will be doing the same. Before that, what has this watch done well? Finishing and contrast. The way the case and bracelet has been sandblasted is a fantastic look. Not only does it make the watch look all the more understated, but it also lets you appreciate the facets and bevels around the case and the lugs. These segmented sections add visual depth to the watch, and since it doesn't play with the light, you are left with medium and hard shadows on the many surfaces instead. It is very unique. The contrast, the way the dial, the bracelet and the case match in color, and the batons and indices, how they jump out of the dial, is very appealing. It makes the watch legible and surprisingly simple in appearance. I commend the choice of numerals used and the method of how the batons have been elongated to occupy the negative space on the dial. There has been a clear attention to detail in a lot of areas. Now we will migrate to one of the watches that I love to hate. The Audemars Piguet Royal Oak is a watch that continues to both amaze and baffle me. I have always seen it as a prototype, a watch that very much has a hard industrial feel to it. It doesn't feel refined. A watch stuck in the 70s that has never really managed to escape the time period, but has in fact transcended time, and has become a symbol of future modern and retro design motifs. One that is not perfect, but in its own way, a marvel of design. One day I hate the watch, the next day I love it. And this push and pull makes me think that it may be the perfect watch for me. Sort of like the perfect marriage, where I'll always be astounded by it, but infinitely fascinated by what it represents. Essentially for years, it is a watch that still continues to make me think, It always leaves me asking and questioning more about it. That, to me, is art in the truest sense. And on this occasion, we will be able to see why this watch stands as something more than just a timepiece, and why its status needs to be emphasized. What the Royal Oak has managed to do through its bizarre approach is manage to show clarity. We have sharp edges throughout, rounded and faceted sides, flat but also conforming parts. It is a seriously complicated design when the parts are broken up, but as a whole, It actually is so simple in appearance when being worn. The complexity is only there when you look for it. Returning to the Octo Finissimo, we see that it has parts that are simple, like the bracelet, which seems refined and less complex than the Royal Oak. Then we migrate to the case. Some have said that its design harkens back to 30s Art Deco design motifs, likening it to the Chrysler building with its many facets. Yes, there are aspects of 30s inspired design used in this piece, but the essence of 30s design was about sculptural and organic forms. It was an age of streamlining. I don't mean streamlining in the sense of reduction, but the whole idea of aerodynamics played a role in how products were made during the time. Looking at the cars of the time period and some of the consumer products, squared off motifs were used, but rarely. So the stepping on the case is unique, but I believe the watch would have benefited more if the edges were softer. And now we can address one of the aspects that disturbs the format of the watch. It is complicated for the sake of complexity. Over complex. There is little clarity between the parts. And to analyze this, one of the best parts to compare is the bezel. The Royal Oaks bezel is a clear example of an elegant approach. It appears like a circle. You can see that in fact it consists of eight sides. They are subtle with an array of brushing and polishing to the surfaces. It is an example of clarity. The bezel of the Octo Finissimo consists of a few sections. On first impressions it appears circular. Then you see that inside it has a frame that consists of eight sections. 
and you look beyond the bezel and you notice that the second section of the frame also consists of eight parts. It is difficult to qualify if the watch would look better or worse with the circular aspect of the bezel removed or if the inner eight sides were removed instead. But what the bezel is supposed to do is break up the case from the dial. Instead, this format appears too busy. Perhaps the watch might have looked even better if the bezel was a more literal translation of an octagon, eliminating the circle form entirely. It is difficult to justify what is right and wrong because the emphasis of complexity is focused in different areas between these two pieces. Where the Royal Oak focuses its complexity towards the bracelet, the Octo Finissimo focuses the complexity on the case. You have to decide where the complexity should lie. Where the Royal Oak is industrial and hard-edged, the Octo Finissimo seems more brutal, more intense. And I get the feeling that this watch has a greater emphasis on 80s Italian design motifs specifically, like the Lamborghini Countach, for example. Maybe what we can draw from this is that the design is very Italian. It is very out there and in your face. Presence seems to be a big part of the watch. And it leads me to question whether a size decrease would help underplay itself and suit more wrists. In its current state, it seems to be very bulky for the sake of being bulky. There have been questions posed about whether the interest in this watch is just a fad, a trend. Undoubtedly, this watch looks to be something built for someone who is fashion conscious. It has that flair that many would find attractive. Maybe it is too early for us to tell for sure, but the design of this watch doesn't seem anywhere near as refined as it could be. I have doubts in my mind about it being someone's only watch. The bracelet should taper more, the watch head and lug integration needs to be looked at harder, and the overall size needs to be reduced. If all of these aspects were addressed, I believe it would appeal to a broader audience. Like how the Royal Oak seems to be a watch with a 70s feel to it, this piece has the hallmarks of a watch from the 80s. And this could ring with many people who enjoy nostalgia from that time period. In a few decades it may very well be an icon. But as it stands now, I'm not drawn to the watch. It lacks congruence. And where the design like the Royal Oak also appears to be a watch that has conflicting elements, it still remains understated in the way it presents itself. Where the design of the Octo Finissimo seems to be hewn from a block of steel with diagonals and right angles that clash. It's not easy being original, but there have been modern success stories, like the Vacheron Constantine overseas that I will link in the corner of the screen now. So the Octo Finissimo is a watch that I have disregarded for a long time. It always felt like a watch that I looked past, and it's a pity, because there are aspects to it that deserve attention. Its bold approach could appeal to some, but not everyone. It's not my place to call a piece like this a fashion watch, because aren't all watches placed in the category of fashion? But the design of the Octo Finissimo feels like a glorified fashion statement, and less of a piece that will go down as a groundbreaking design. A watch that in my mind may have looked good on a poster 30 years ago, but one that now seems to have stumbled into a different time period.